Welcome, friends, to Midlife is a Fickle Bitch. I am super excited to have Debbie Thompson with me today. We connected a while ago, and she is just this fabulous coach who talks about um, healthy eating, and she's phenomenal. So let me introduce her. Debbie is a health coach who helps women over 40 who feel drawn to fulfill their purpose and live life to the fullest in this phase of life. But you're sick and tired of recurring struggles with feeling out of control with food and on and off dieting. Debbie helps you eat like a normal person and find effortless consistency taking care of yourself without the extremes or perfectionism of diets. So you lose the mental, physical, and emotional weight and feel beautiful in your favorite clothes to do all you're alive to do. Welcome, Debbie. Thank you. I'm so excited Great. to have you on the show. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about how you got into this and why you feel it's important to help women with their eating and learning how to be healthy. Well, that was me. That description was me. Um, and coaches I had talked about how normally, similar to you, our pain and our biggest problems and struggles that we've overcome, our mess becomes our message. You know, who better to help guide other people than someone who has been there themselves? So um, I had, when I was a teenager and in college, I actually, I was a binge eater um, I had exercise bulimia, which nobody knew that was a thing back then, but it's basically exactly what it sounds like. I used exercise to purge, um, lots of on and off dieting then. And I had this healing from that that I can tell you more about if you want to hear it, but it, it's just a crazy story. And then I was fine for like 20 years, no problems. I had three kids. I always got the weight off, no issues with food. And then I turned 40. <laughs> And the big age hormones, you know, set in and all of a sudden I was gaining weight without doing anything differently. Like a lot of us. Um, and that did. And the only thing I knew how to do was sort of what we did back then in the day, I started slashing calories. I started trying to exercise. I was on the treadmill doing all that. Nothing worked. Um, and I struggled and kept gaining weight from like 40 to like 46 gained, 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 um, 25 or 30 pounds. And finally I, um, stumbled upon information on social media that was not about dieting, um, but specifically about women over 40. And, um, I started just putting these puzzle pieces together and taking baby steps instead of dieting. And that balanced the hormones and helped me to not only lose the 25 or 30 pounds, but I actually felt better and healthier than ever because I didn't do this by dieting. I did it through healthy habits, um, no extremes and stuff like that. Um, so I got rid of a lot of symptoms and I was a social worker at the time. I had done social work for over 20 years and I kept feeling led to like start an agency or an organization or something. And all of a sudden, like it came to me, well, why don't I, you know, start a coaching business? Um, so I went to health coaching school. And like I said, because of sort of being coached about the type of, um, uh, you know, services you would be most effective with are things that you've overcome. So I sort of have put this all together um, because I too, when I was turning 40, I was also in this crisis about my social work career, feeling like there was more for me to do, feeling like I, I was supposed to branch out on my own and start something. Um, and so this all was sort of meshed together for me, all of this struggle with food. I felt like a fraud. I felt like, how could I help anybody else or lead anything when I had the, the secret crap going on in the background. And um, so, yeah, so I just feel like from talking to a lot of other women, there are a lot of us like this. It's not like just the woman who wants to coast from here on. She feels like she still has a mission or she may feel actually called to something spiritually. Um, she wants to really, um, like make the most of her life, exactly what you're coaching people to do. Um, 
So once I realized there were a lot of people with that combination, just like I was, you know, that's who I wanted to help. I love that story. And I've never heard of exercise <laughs> bulimia. Mm -hmm. And I have always been a yo-yo dieter <clears throat> going from the Weight Watchers to Mediterranean diets to uh, limiting my calories. And then you hit this certain age and you can't get it on. Right. Like, it's really hard to get the weight off. So tell me a little bit about these exercise or not the exercise, but the healthy habits that you were talking about. Like, is it us learning to eat differently? Is it incorporating more fruits and vegetables? Is it limiting cal? Like what exactly helped you lose that weight? Okay. So yes, that's the million dollar question. Okay. I almost want to like say what it isn't first. So what healthy habits aren't are is extreme or focusing, worrying about perfection, because when you think about it, that doesn't make that stresses us out. Stress is not healthy. Um, perfection is impossible. And no one, anyone who's watching this or you, Sherry, would probably agree. Do you see like a hundred different theories on what is healthy? Is coconut oil healthy this week? Is apple cider vinegar or avocados or bananas? Like no one agrees on what's perfectly healthy anyway. So it's not about perfection and it's not about changing everything at once because it just, it's, we can't stick to it. And then that makes us mentally unhealthy. So health is, you know, that mental, physical, spiritual health, emotional health all put together. But basically um, what I had learned and the key needle movers over 40, if, if you want to like distill it down, are that we need to build muscle and we need to eat more protein. Now, the reason for that and the other part of it is more clean foods. It does seem to make more of a difference the older we get. So the reason for the muscle and the protein is because what happens is we, we all, men and women do that, do start to lose muscle mass somewhere, you know, by 40. So this is why so many of us, even if we're not doing anything differently, start to put on weight. Muscle speeds your metabolism. So you, the more of it you lose, the more your metabolism is going to slow down and you're going to keep gaining weight without doing anything. And this, again, is why this might continue through the rest of your life, unless you're building muscle. Um, and then the protein feeds the muscle. You need enough amino acids or protein to feed your muscle, or you're going to do all that effort and not get the muscle and not to get the metabolism. So it's the craziest thing because this has nothing to do with calorie slashing. It's not about cardio. Now, there are a lot of little nuances that I'm sure we'll get into because obviously, you know, other things matter. But if you're going to focus on two things, focus on that. So that's what I had stumbled upon when I said in the beginning that all of a sudden I found Facebook pages back then um, about not dieting, but about what you need over 40. Um, and the part about the cleaner eating or the healthier eating, which we can go into, the reasons that this matters is um, a couple of things. It does help your hormones. Um, you want to get the added hormones out of your food because they're going to add up. And it's almost like a, you know, a glass. You can think about it. Like when we're younger, we're eating it, we're eating it, we're eating it. And all of a sudden, like we get to a certain age and our body just like, that is enough. Like we have to get this garbage out of here. Um, so yeah, so that's why you do want to move toward cleaner eating. Um, and also the other thing that I, it's just my theory, but I feel like the prevalence of autoimmune diseases are so, are just getting more and more and more common. Um, and again, I feel like that is a logical thing. Like the more we eat these and the older we get and the more of it is in our system, like our liver can't detoxify it anymore. It's just too much. So that's why you probably could get away with it in your twenties. However, so sadly, like younger and younger people are getting diagnosed with this stuff now because they're having it from day one. We might not have, you know, the food system was a little bit less sugary and crappy 
when we were really young, at least for me, I'm 58. So the, it's just gotten progressively worse over the years. I mean, think about it. We didn't have a Starbucks on every corner and we might have had McDonald's. We didn't have 12 other, you know, it's just like everywhere now. Um, and so we're just ingesting this all day long. It's so readily available. We didn't have DoorDash. We couldn't sit in our house and say, DoorDash, bring, you know, DoorDash, bring me a snick. Literally, go to the the 7 Eleven, go to the convenience store and get me a Snickers bar. Like th this isn't gonna help. <laughs> So does that answer your question? It does. Before? And you talking about the um, protein and muscle. <clears throat> so there may be women listening who will say, okay, I get on the scale and I'm trying to lose weight. I don't like the scale. It scares me. It depresses me. Yes. It makes me very, very unhappy. <laughs> but uh -huh. I know that if we're building muscle mass, Mm -hmm. the scale will go up because we're building this muscle, correct? And I know that mentally when I was working out and was building muscle mass, I was eating healthier, cleaner eating, but that stupid scale was going up. So yeah. it played mind games with me and made me feel like, okay, Cher, you're doing all the right things, but you're gaining weight. Mm -hmm. And I would have people tell me, Sherry, it's because you're gaining muscle mass and muscle is heavier than fat, but <clears throat> it can play tricks, right? So we have to remember what you're saying is to increase our muscle and it's okay if we get on the scale and it's up a little bit and to eat healthier, the clean eating and the protein, which are things that I don't do. And I need to do and incorporate. I always say that I need to do that. I need to be more accountable to my eating. Um, but also this autoimmune, I have an undiagnosed mm. autoimmune disease. And the older I get, the worse I feel. Yeah. And I do know that it is because I'm not eating properly. I'm not, not drinking enough water. I'm eating too much sugar. Again, being accountable to what I'm eating. And then this takes me into like empty nest and mm -hmm. depression and feeling this need to consume food to fill the yeah. empty void that we have. Mm -hmm. And a lot of women I think are turning to alternatives to um, really fill the loss of their children leaving the nest. And so do you have some uh, tips or tricks for them that how can they eat healthy and feel good and find that something to fill them up? And I know that we're talking about men mentally, physically, emotionally, all those things. So, you know, what mm -hmm. all of that can they do to, to help them feel better? Oh, great question. Okay. So first of all, as far as I do want to speak to the part about the muscle and the scale and all that, because I do encourage people to either not weigh themselves or weigh themselves very sparingly. Like again, when we think of diet mentality, the way we all grew up and all of it, you li literally weighed yourself every day. Like that was the only measurement of your success. So number one, you can use your measurements instead of, but even that is not going to necessarily, depending this is the thing too, depending on how much maybe excess weight a person has, if they start building muscle because it's speeding up their metabolism, they should be losing weight anyway. However, at a certain point, it might table off and you're upset and you don't, you know, you don't like that because again, we're only used to judging ourselves by the scale. The funny thing is, is when I went through this journey, I was, I had recently gotten separated and he got the scale. <laughs> he got the bathroom scale. I'm sure that wasn't, I'm just joking. Like I probably left it there because I hated it so bad. Um, but anyhow, I had no scale and I wasn't going to spend money on a scale. So I had no idea. And I always wonder to this day, in some ways, I wish I would have kept track so I could tell people it went up, it went down, it went even like, this is how long, you know, so I could be specific. 
But um, I, who knows? And who knows what I would have done if I was seeing that. So because I didn't even have it, there was no, the only gauge that I used instead of the scale being a gauge was my honesty with myself. Is this choice going to lead me to my goal or not? Like, what a difference between, oh, can I get away with this and still make the scale move? Or are you going to sit with yourself and be honest and say, yeah, I know that whether this was healthy or not healthy. So this also leads a little bit into the second question um, as far as how all this ties together also with midlife is, um, you know, in, the, in this self-honesty part and everything, um, we just, we want to get, I keep sort of repeating this, we want to get away from diet mentality because um, part of that, again, is this shooting for perfection. So when you're shooting for, for perfection, you can't reach it. So you just feel like a failure constantly. You're more depressed. Your kids are gone. You're already depressed. Now you can't lose weight because you can't be perfect. So you really feel like you suck. So we just don't want to do that. Okay. <laughs> so I call it like in my program, I call it baby step body. Like we just take very little baby steps. Okay. And we focus on the essentials and the needle movers, not on perfection. That's unattainable. Um, so that's very, that's a part of it. Um, but then a part, the part of it that is legitimately about like emotional eating, filling that void, um, and the mindset, even the part of it, whether it's mindset about the scale, mindset about how honest we're being with ourselves, this part of it, um, I completely misunderstood all of this as well. Like mindfulness, which is a, as a hard word to either like explain or, um, maybe even believe in. Cause I remember thinking that was a weird, like, what is mindfulness? But basically what that is, is, is paying attention to what you're doing, staying aware of what you're doing. Um, not thinking that you have to follow every single like thought or feeling in your head. That's one part of mindfulness, not just being like a robot, not going through your day, whatever urge you have, you follow it, whatever thought you have, you, you know, you, you follow that. Um, instead you, you have the ability to pause for a minute and think about, you know, like I said, even like, whether is this honestly going to lead me to feeling better? Is this honestly going to help me reach my goal or not? And with emotional eating and filling the void, part of that with my being mindful is you pause and you ask yourself, like, to unpack that a little bit. What exactly am I feeling? Because there's a difference between sad, lonely, angry, um, guilty. Like some of us might have a lot of guilt about how we raised, raised our kids. So then they're gone and you're like, I should have done this, this, and this differently. There's a lot of different emotions we're feeling. And some of them might make you want to eat. And some of them might not make, make you want to eat. So identify which ones that is, first of all. Um, and you might think it's all about filling a void, but those are all different. You know, it, it triggered something. So what are your triggers? Um, and then really identifying, all right, well, what would meet that need? Loneliness, meeting the need of loneliness is different from meeting the need of guilt. So figure that part out. Um, and just like as a quick thing, as far as just a legitimate, I feel very lonely because this kid is gone. There's also the lack the the change of identity. This is huge. When we've been mom all our lives and prioritized everybody else and there's a vacuum, that's a different issue from guilt or sadness. There's just a lot, like you're going through a grief process. You probably deal with that with people. Let yourself go through a grief process, but be honest about it. Like food is not going to help this. So, you know, really unpack what the feelings are and, you know, maybe make a list for each one of these. Like, how can you deal with this? Is it therapy? Is it a coach? Is it the fact that you're, you know, that you're trying to meet the need the best way you know how. And yes, food does, food gives us 
feel good chemicals of dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin. And that's one of the things I was going to say. Loneliness is almost in some ways a little bit of an easier one with this issue because you can get oxytocin from Sherry and I were just talking about pets. Oxytocin comes from closeness. So you were getting all of this from your kid or your kids. And if you have neglected your marriage or you've just even gotten, or you may be a single mother, um, a pet, oddly enough, pets, and this is why like pet therapy is so effective, get the cuddling. Get as much cuddling as you can. If you have, um, you know, other people in your life that whether it's your, you know, your, your sister, your brother, your parents, you know, an aunt or uncle, anyone, a friend that you can get the closeness with, get hugs with, that's going to give you some oxytocin that you're missing from this child. Um, but also for some people, this is where we hear some of these tips that this is another part of this. Don't use a generic one size all fits all tip because like I hear this one that I'm about to explain and it never works for me. Go help somebody else. Now, if for those of us who have been people pleasers and codependents a lot of our life and we are freaking like empty, go help somebody else. No, the food is going to fill me up. Helping <laughs> is just like some other little codependent drain. So anyhow. <laughs> if that works for anyone listening, go help somebody else. But if that doesn't really give it to you, you actually need to fill up and you're trying to do it with food. So you don't have to, like, again, I hate to use the word lie to yourself. This is just, it's part of, we're doing our best. So yes, food is trying to fill you up, but you actually need to find something else. So I think Sherry, this was part of your answer, but do you, or your question, do you have a hobby that used to really actually fill you up? Don't exercise yet. Like I'm not gonna I exercised once a week for like six months. Cause that is all I could handle. That was it. You don't have to do everything at once. Um, because again, trying to build the muscle. So that's all I did. But, um, yeah. Did you have a hobby? Did you have a sport? Some people loved to swim. If you, there's an indoor gym and you love to swim, go swim. If you don't like to, you know, or walking. Um, but yeah, just even friendship, start a book club, be around your friends, uh, get involved in your church. Spirituality is a very grounding, filling kind of need. So does that, it does. Yeah. I think that everything that you were talking about is spot on. And as you were talking, I was thinking about myself personally, and I have one child and I didn't go through the normal empty nest because I think one, he was a daycare baby. So at six weeks of age, he was off to being taken care of some by somebody else. I was working. Mm -hmm. And so him leaving was just another natural reaction for me. He's off, he's doing his thing. Yeah. But I know that that loneliness can set in. And especially, I think around dinner time, when you were mm. used to making the foods That's for really your family, good. and your children are not sitting there anymore. And, you know, if you have lost touch with your significant other, or you could be a single mom and mm -hmm. you're sitting there at the table and what do you talk about? You know, right. and you will fill yourself up and maybe overfill mm -hmm. because you're just not happy or satisfied. Mm -hmm. I think loneliness is the biggest trigger for so many women in midlife, especially with the empty nest, because they, I think they, they know that it's okay that they're gone, but what do we do? And that identity is a huge exactly. thing. You know, yeah. who am I now? We're, you know, if you think about um, the titles that we're given, mom, wife, whatever. And when we're introduced, we're introduced as Justin's mom, yeah. right? Now we're not, who are we? We're so yeah. used to being that mom. And for me personally, I overeat when I'm bored. Mm -hmm. 
and when I'm frustrated, okay. you know, so if I'm, if I'm just angry or upset about something, I will eat. I'm not hungry. I know damn well. Mm-hmm. I am not hungry. My stomach is not gurgling. It's not saying mm-hmm. feed me, but it is this, I just want to feel good in this moment. I just want to grab something. Mm-hmm. And I think that's our quick fix as a midlife mom too, when our children are gone that, you know, maybe they were supposed to text you back and they forgot, you know, now we're feeling rejection. Mm-hmm. We're feeling There's, These are so many different feelings. Exactly. You know? And yeah. so now it's like, okay, well, I didn't get, so now I'm mad. I'm mad at them for not remembering me. Right. So it's like, we, and then you're guilty that you're mad. Yes, I know. <laughs> I know. And I love the part that you talk about filling your cup because I did um, actually a podcast myself talking about feeling unworthy and how important it is to fill our own cups. You can't fill my cup, Debbie. My husband can't fill my cup. My child cannot fill my cup. I have to fill it. And to be healthy, my cup cannot be full of Snicker bars. I will feel horrible, right? I will feel good eating them, but I will pay the price later. Mm -hmm. So for the, the eating and the mindfulness and the spirituality, the really getting in touch with ourselves and saying, this is okay. And making that choice. I think that one thing that you're saying is the baby steps, making the choice, realizing what's causing us to do this and then take the step. We all have a choice every day. Mm. And if we don't choose to make that change, we're going to bitch about it later. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, we're going to be complaining. Like, you know, if, if you and I were talking 10 weeks from now and I'm like, oh, I'm going to do this. And then you meet with me 10 weeks. You're like, oh, so how are you feeling? Well, I feel pretty crappy. Well, what did you do to change? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Right. Nothing. I didn't do anything. Well, why? Oh, because X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. We make excuses. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was just thinking this morning as I was getting ready that so many of us at here we are at 50 plus and we've hit this major milestone in our life 50 years are gone if we live to be a hundred we're halfway and maybe a little more closer to that hundred so what are we going to do today to make that difference to make that choice to feel better and Mm -hmm. live longer and be there I think the biggest thing that women right now are struggling with is this my children are not paying attention to me they've moved out they don't care that I even heard some woman say that uh her daughter did a drive-by for Mother's Day and she felt so sad about that and that is sad but your daughter is not the one who's going to make you happy if you're happy with yourself and she did a drive by, okay, I'm glad you're here, but mom has got something to do because I have plans with my girlfriend or I have plans to go to the spa. Mm-hmm. You know, don't make that your be all, right? Mm-hmm. And I think it's really important everything that you're talking about with health. If we feel good about ourselves, we're not going to project that onto anybody else. Right. It's going to be our own journey. And and it's making me excited now to think about, you know what, Sherry, you need to start making better choices. You wake up in the morning with your body hurting, you're Mm -hmm. gaining weight. Mm -hmm. You have a bike that your husband bought Christmas, two Christmases ago. Um, You know, you should be walking, you should be eating more protein, all of these things. And I don't Mm -hmm. because it's easier to eat the crap. Yeah. I'll be very honest. It's easier You know, to like right. go down the aisle and look for the cookie, the Oreos and the crackers instead of staying on the outside. Like I've learned the outside of the supermarket, Sherry, the outside is where the good stuff is, right? Well, I can do that. And then I'm like, oh, you know, I didn't eat lunch and oh, I'm really hungry. I'm going to go for the Oreos and I bring them home. 
Mm-hmm. And then I sit there and I open them up and lick the icing out and I get a uh, Oreos are a whole thing. <laughs> I used to have a whole Oreos. I'd watch General Hospital in a dorm with a bunch of friends and like eat like an entire row or more sometimes. Of o- Oreos are a whole like ritual. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. So it's, you know, I think that us really tapping into why are we overeating? what's making us depressed, how we can make those choices, fill our own cup and really be in that present moment of making that choice. And I like what you said about, um, is what I'm ready to consume going to get me to my end goal? Mm -hmm. And I never think like that. Oh, okay. And that's a good thing for me Mm -hmm. to think about because if I'm eating a carrot, it's a carrot. It's a carrot. Mm. Like I'm like, it's a carrot. It's tasteless. Exactly. But if I think about how is it going to get me to where I want to be is really that, that perfect. Um, yeah, I, I, I need to start doing that. I mean, everything that you're talking about, I'm like, Oh, thank you so much for being on today Aww, because I kind of needed this good. kick in the ass, right. To, to be better, to feel better and to be diagnosed with an unknown autoimmune disease unknown. Okay. Can't you tell me exactly what it is, but to know it's unknown and they're okay. So what am I supposed to do about it? Yeah. What? Right. You know, Oh, okay. So I have inflammation in my body. Okay, Sherry. So eat Mm. anti-inflammatory foods, Mm -hmm. which I've done, Mm -hmm. but then I've got the Snickers bar. Mm-hmm. Hello, hello. You, know, it's like you go to check out and you got Going the magazine. You. Sherry's yeah. looking at the magazine. Sherry's looking at the looking. Snickers and the oh, M&Ms. I like, hear you. <laughs> so how do you think that we, I mean, I know that the mindfulness and all of that, but let's say that you're what, let's say that you and I are deciding to go to the grocery store and you're showing me, this mm. is how you should eat Sherry. Mm-hmm. And we get to the end and Sherry's like, you can see me. God, she's look at the Snickers bar. She's looking right. at the peanut butter. She's look at those oh, Oreos, God. right? The- you know, so if you were like holding my hand, going through this process and you saw that trigger, you saw, the, what would you say to me to help get me off the ledge? Help me realize that Sherry, it's time to come back down here to the reality of this is what is better for you. Like, how can I make that carrot taste better? Or what in my mind can I say, this is better for me? Or maybe the carrot is is irrelevant and I shouldn't be eating carrots because I don't think they're (laughs) yummy, right? (laughs) So it's like, you know, um, so if you were, like, Mm -hmm. how would you help me get through that little tiny, I I mean, you know, they have it right there. How get me from unloading my goodies to pay without Mm -hmm. grabbing it? God, so much good stuff. I was taking notes here so I would remember all the points. Okay, first of all, because it's these all fit together. First of all, what you were saying, starting with that um, fill your own cup, uh, happy with yourself, even if your kid doesn't treat you. This is what, one of the things that I, how I describe it is inside out rather than outside in. So in other words, right? Your kid did legitimately make you happy. Food do, like, does legitimately make us happy-ish, right? It has a little bit of a double-edged sword. Outside things can make us happy. And they can feel like they're making us do things. Like looking at the Snickers there feels like it's making you grab Whatever. You get what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Um, and it's quite a shift, though to decide we are going to live inside out. We are going to decide that we can make ourselves happy. We can find other things to, you know, bring us joy rather than being codependent on our child or the food or anything else. Right. So this is like being internally motivated versus looking for some motivation out there. Someone else is going to make me feel like doing these things. Um, I forget what I was going to say. I'll, I'll probably think about it in a minute, 
But so you're tracking me so far, right? Yes. So it sort of comes from that as a mindset to begin with. And it's sort of a revelation, a light bulb to go, oh yeah, that's true. Like I, it feels like I want, or I might want something else to motivate me to get off the couch and work out. However, literally my legs work and I can stand up and go work out. I always use this analogy, like, I cannot make myself do trigonometry. Literally, I don't know what it is. I never took it. However, it is a lie to say the sentence, I can't make myself work out. I can stand up unless my legs aren't working and my arms. So that is the internal versus the external. Like I need someone else to motivate me. No, you, you want someone else to make you feel like it but you can get up and do it. Okay. So that's the inside out part. And I wanted to point that out to you because if you already are sort of in that mindset in terms of your relationship with your son and how you're going to live this phase of life, you can apply that to the relationship with food. That is, can be a pretty big revelation or the relationship to healthy habits in general. Um, the second thing, as far as the carrots, like I'm not, I am not snacking on carrots either. And I love, love, love this part because this is sort of going back to the baby step body and the don't try for perfection. I would pick one, I would pick like one thing that maybe you want to either decrease or decide you're going to have it on in a certain way. So out of Oreo, Snickers, M&Ms, you know, French fries, takeout, like out of all the things you're struggling with, I would pick the easiest one, easiest one and say, all right, I don't need that one. I'm going to keep all of the rest of these and not worry about that. So And I wouldn't just be going around the outside of the supermarket at first. Like I've been doing this over 10 years now. Now I can do, if you would have told me 10 years that I have to do what I do now, I would have just run the other way. So that's why literally like increasing your protein compared to, I have to only eat carrots and skip my Snickers. Like I was still eating chocolate. I was still putting sugar in my coffee. I was doing all kinds of stuff I don't do now. Um, but I just took it one tiny little choice at a time. Um, so does that make sense with that? It does. It does. And I think that uh, I just had a a light bulb moment. Okay. (laughs) Um, as you're talking about decreasing the things, like one thing, if I said, okay, this month I'm going to not go for the Snickers. I, that's one thing that I'm I'll just going to I'll get the Oreos, but I know they're in my bag and I don't need to also grab the Snickers. Right. right. So as I'm starting to feel better, right? So I'm thinking to myself as you're talking, okay, so I'm going to decrease that Snicker bar. Mm-hmm. And as I'm incorporating more of the good stuff and I'm exercising, my body is going to say, okay, Sherry, you don't need that Snicker bar because you're feeling better. And then I can go on to the next thing, right? And say, okay, Sherry, so now this month we're going to forego the Oreos, right? And taking this, I love this so much because I have been a yo-yo dieter. I am, I will admit it, I would go from starving myself to limiting Mm -hmm. myself to the Weight Watchers, the all of the bullshit. And Mm -hmm. what I hated the most was them saying, you can't have this. Exactly. If somebody, okay, so I'm not a type, if anybody tells me I can't have it, I will go get it. That's exactly all you want. Why would you tell tell somebody that? So that makes perfect sense. And I hope it makes perfect sense to our listeners because if Mm -hmm. it's, you know, I love everything that you're talking about. I, even though some of the stuff I know like the mindset because I teach this stuff too, but it is about when that light bulb moment goes, like it just did for me. Hello. Um, to really feel that I can do this. I can take these baby steps. I can work towards that end goal. If that carrot isn't going to get me there, then maybe the celery stick, you know, I kind of think about, um, that, gosh, you'll know what I'm talking about. The show that would come on after school it was called the after school, yes. the little after guy, specials. Because, yes. And the yeah. little guy that who would talk like, uh, he was like a little animated 
talking about something and they're talking about the okay. food, you know, the food groups and the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I would be like, ew, why would I exactly. want grapes after school when I could have the cupcakes that my mom made, right? Exactly. So this is such a, I think, a, a habitual thing too, that if we grew up and it's funny mm-hmm. because my son, he lives with his girlfriend. She is more, she's, eats like a bird. Like she's, mm. she's just a petite little thing and she eats more fruits and vegetables. And Justin grew up in our family where he would have cereal and then he would have a granola bar. He always saw the granola bar as a sweet snack mm-hmm. dessert. Mm-hmm. So when he moved in with Amy, he started doing, she goes, what are you doing? And he said, well, I need to have my granola bar. She said, why do you need to have it? Why can't you have a peach or a grape? Or so he goes, ew. And she said, you're having freaking dessert with breakfast. Like, this is not healthy, Justin. <laughs> this is... But he grew up that way. Like, I never stopped yeah. him. He would say, mm-hmm. he's hungry. Go to the pantry and get it. You're old mm-hmm. enough to do what you want. But when she started saying that to him, he made a choice. Hmm to decide what does he want that day? What is going to help him Mm. get to the angle like you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Because he started exercising, he started making better choices. He does all the cooking. So he will send, and it's very colorful dishes. Like I'm like, you didn't learn that from me. (laughs) You did not learn from me. (laughs) But to realize that there is that. So we can make that choice. We can have that end goal. And I love what you're talking about. And I'm going to start incorporating this into my life. And uh, yeah. Um, And I, you know, I think for those listeners out there who are empty nesters and you are trying to fill that void, grab something healthy, make that choice. And remember that, you know, this is your journey and to, fill your own cup and Mm -hmm. not with the Snickers like I would do and embrace imperfection, right? We don't want to be perfect. Um, So what last things would you like to tell our listeners, Debbie? Well, the last little piece of that puzzle that I think will probably be good to add is is the the other part of what you mentioned in your struggle, like if I was walking you through the grocery store um, and because I wouldn't be, this is the key, like even to remember your why, W-H-Y, and while you're eating something or choosing something, will this lead me to my goal? Or you're in that grocery store aisle, you're absolutely starving and famished. You don't care about your why at the moment or you forget because you are habituated to just do the same thing all the time. So I've talked about the mindfulness, going through things mindfully, but the other part of it is neuroscience, is the way our brains develop habits and remember things and rewire. So no, we will not remember our why in the heat of the moment, or we won't care. Um, And we're so like pulled to keep doing what we were doing. So something that you need that I would do if I were you, like, I mean, there's like always practical things. And then there's, there's like sort of the mindfulness and neuroscience part of it. But number one, don't go hungry to the grocery store. We all sort of know that. Um, But what I would do is if you either have to go to the grocery store hungry or whatever, it just happens sometimes, take something with you maybe, um, or make sure you're having a go-to, like there's better chocolate. That's one thing that saved my life. When I was changing all this, instead of having regular ice cream at night, I would make banana ice cream with chocolate protein powder and I have my chocolate ice cream still. So there's, that's just an example, but there, when we, you know, I can tell people like where to find, you know, I can share recipes and stuff. So if you're craving chocolate, cause you're used to chocolate, you can find a a healthier option for it. You don't have to go for the celery or carrots. I always say that, like if I had to eat that all day, I would be falling off the wagon too. So that's one thing, the practicality of it, but then reminding yourself, reminders, reminders. Um, I always tell people to to do things like, whether you would put post-it notes around in your planner, like when we're done with this conversation, whatever your aha was, if you 
you know, you need to write it down or you're going to forget it. Like we all have had these times. We have an epiphany and then, or you were doing really well. You said you ate the clean food, you were exercising. It can happen at the beginning or it can happen in the middle or somewhere else that we either keep falling off the wagon because we forget the why or life gets crazy and that schedule got interrupted and you didn't understand how to like reset yourself quickly. So we need lots and lots of reminders. And that's also where like a support group can come in handy. Um, Not like a Weight Watchers thing where they're only judging you on the scale and telling you to, you know, deprive. But like when, like in my group, people see it every single day, they're not going to forget, you know, and we have coaching calls and, you know, they have the, all the information coming at them all the time. So it just helps your brain to rewire because that's getting in the subconscious. So you get in the grocery aisle and you don't have to think so hard because you've been like sort of bathing and soaking in this all day, every day. So having a substitution, not going too hungry. um, Yeah. And then also using these reminder things yeah. because otherwise, you know, when we're going it alone, it just, it just slips our mind and we go back to who we've always been. Cause that is what brain wiring is all about. Right. What makes us comfortable, I think is the huge thing in our life. And I also make a list. I take a list with me. Mm -hmm. Not that I stay to the list because you know, those things call, oh, I, don't. I hear them. I hear them when I'm in the aisle, they're calling my mm-hmm. name, but I do try to take a list to keep me on track mm-hmm. to get in and out as quickly as possible without diverting. Uh, I really enjoyed having you with me, Debbie, yeah. and I'm going to have how to reach out to her in the notes. So you can reach out and work with her and she can give you all the good tidbits of how to have the mindfulness and how to stay on track and the end goals and um, really having that support. Debbie, I feel that this energy that you brought today has encouraged me to make a difference in my life and make that change because we only get one time around. And if I, and I don't want to feel like I feel. You know, I don't want to, I don't like getting up and feeling the pain and, Mm -hmm. and feeling sluggish and all of that. And I'm sure there's a lot of women out there who are listening and saying, yeah, I feel that too. And I want to make that difference and make that change. So, um, so check Debbie out and work with her, check out her group, um, check her out in all of the social media that I will be sharing and any last words, Debbie, before we say goodbye. Uh, you all can do it. I mean, you you have what it takes. You just, we just want to do it the right way, not through dieting or extremes and find ways that make you feel successful and, and encouraged and supported, not making you feel worse. True. Very true. And the end <laughs> goal and fill yeah. our own cups. Yeah. Until next time, my friends stay feisty.